Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for loving me and making me one of your children. Help me love and obey you. Help me love others the way you love me. And welcome back to another wonderful Wednesday night. We're always grateful for the way that God gives us the opportunity to engage with wonderful new people and friends that we are experiencing for the first time. And Charlotte, I'm going to ask you just to unfold a little bit of what's happened since Ann Lowe is here with us, dear. Just share that with the people. Yeah, some of you will remember the program a few weeks ago in February when Ann Lowe was with us from the International Prayer Council in Malaysia. And she was such a tonic, that's what I called her. So full of the joy of the Lord and His presence. And she has connected us with several people actually. And one is our guest today that Brant will be introducing in just a moment. But you will want to really be attuned to this program. This program is going to be about some people that are near and dear to our hearts, and that is children. And you know the children of this earth are going to be the vehicles that God is going to use, I believe, as I've been hearing, it's so exciting, to really evangelize and to, and, and to get them to be able to really understand how to commune and pray, with, pray to the Lord. We know this is our prayer meeting for Wednesday evenings, and we're so grateful for that. And to get us just ready, I'm going to read a couple of scriptures first and foremost that we're going to use as kind of a guide. And it's interesting because our guest brought these for us, and it's from Psalm chapter 8, verse 2, and then we're going to skip over to Psalm 2, verse 8. And so this is reading from the New International Version of the Bible, and it says, Through the praise of children and infants, you have established a stronghold against your enemies to silence foes and the avenger. And then down in Psalm chapter 2, verse 8, as I said, ask me and I will make the nations your inheritance, the ends of the earth your possession. And we're going to introduce our friend Candy Marbley, who is here with us, and thank you, Candy, for joining with us. And it's such a joy to get to meet you, and Charlotte's had more contact with you, and then we've had a wonderful time of celebration with, with Pastor Sam, and, mm. and just getting to know him for you, and, mm. and the ways that God has worked with he and the youth, and reaching out to the schools, and and, and then Marina, uh, Miranda, his Wonderful. wife, and, and, and our children's ministry director. It's just yes. exciting yes. how God is fitting together and putting together Amen. people's lives. You know, it's always to do with relationships that God, He knits us. Yes. He, he, he brings to us directions and, and, and corrections and, and adventures as we get to know one another and we get to meet one another. Yeah. So welcome. And I'm going to show this video that you have brought for mm -hmm. us to be able to experience and find out a little bit about your ministry. And then we're going to open it up for you to be able to just tell the background, the history, how mm -hmm. God has designed you really, as, as I, I think, an arrow, a missile, so to speak, <laughs> to be able to really see a mighty move of God happen. Mm -hmm. Watch this video, and then we'll, we'll get into that conversation. When we teach our children to pray, we are partnering with the heart of God. It was Jesus who said, let the children come to me, for the kingdom of heaven belongs to such as these. As children draw near to God, He draws near to them. And the power of answered prayer reveals His goodness, faithfulness, and loving kindness. It is a stunning response to His invitation. In 2014, the Power of the Prayer Covenant for Children book was developed as a new tool to help empower children to pray, learn their value in God's eyes, and grow into a lifestyle of prayer that strengthens their relationship with Jesus. Over the years, 
The Prayer Covenant and its partners have been training leaders in implementing prayer strategies, along with millions of free prayer guides and discipleship materials, impacting over 8 million children and youth throughout 71 nations. Heartfelt testimonies are shared with us from children and leaders around the world. Real stories from those who experience them, sharing how the power of prayer has changed their lives and those around them. My name is Lois. I am nine years old. This story is so powerful because it tells us how we can communicate with God and how He responds to us. I am so thankful we have been taught how to pray. As I was standing at the main gate, I saw a prayer covenant team teaching about a prayer card. I asked myself, is this for me? I decided to go in and listen to their teaching. I felt something happening inside me. Jesus was looking at my heart. We made a circle and held hands and prayed. My heart was racing and tears in my eyes were flowing without control. I could not stop crying. The prior covenant teacher shared that God loves me and now I am his daughter. After I read the prayer covenant book and learned about a powerful God who was also our creator, I received Jesus right then and ran home to tell my aunt. She wanted to know more, so she came back to the church with me and also received Jesus. I was once orphaned, alone and scared after my parents were killed. My new adopted family's church gave me a prayer card, so I began praying it with my new brothers. I am no longer worried about death anymore because I know when we pray the prayer at night, Jesus is there and protects us. I belong to a poor family of seven, and my father had a paralytic illness and lost his job. I learned from the prayer covenant book that prayers can do amazing things. So I prayed from the bottom of my heart for my father's health. At once, I felt amazing power within me. I started praying for my father's health regularly with my family. God answered our prayers, and after a few weeks, our father was completely healed and got his job back. We were a team of 24 children and adults that ministered in a jail for children and youth who have committed terrible crimes. After showing the Jesus film, we shared the gospel using the prayer covenant themes. Ten child inmates made decisions to follow Jesus and change their lives. As you can see, heaven draws near when children pray. Our passion is to see every child everywhere experience the joy of an intimate relationship with the God who made them and release them as partners in mission, giving them opportunities to use their God-given gifts as a harvest force. Together, we can reach every child everywhere with the power of prayer. We invite you to partner with us now and join the movement. This is just so moving. And Candy, we're so happy you're with us. You were going to share with us how God brought about the prayer covenant for children. It's just I just get teary-eyed because I've worked most of my life with children. And I just know their potential and the power, not just potential, but the present um, ways that God can use them mightily. And so I know you're going to develop that too because that's important. And, you know, I was thinking back, how did I learn to pray? I learned to pray because my grandmother and my mm -hmm. mother modeled it. Mm -hmm. And this is so exciting that, that you can go into all of these nations and over 8 million children are praying these themes around the world. Yes, it is. Um, it's a God story. It's, uh, we have just seen and bear witness to his love for children, to the value he places on them. And so I want to begin our time praying the children's prayer card with you. It begins, Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for loving me and making me one of your children. Help me love and obey you. Help me love others the way you love me. 
I am sorry for my sins, wash me clean. I will praise you with my whole heart. Jesus, I want to follow you as my Lord. Change me any way you want. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. I want to know your plans for me. Make me a messenger of your grace, truth, and justice. Use me for your glory and to invite others to follow you. All prayed in the power and in the authority of the name of Jesus. So we have seen God answer these prayers, these Christ-centered prayers uh, in the lives of children all over the world. And so I will jump back to 2010 when my husband and I were attending a church in Mason, Ohio, and Dr. Jerry Kirk spoke on the Lordship of Christ. He said, I have been praying a prayer that has shaped and formed my ministry focus for over 50 years. Every morning, the first thing I pray when I wake up is, Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for your grace that has made me your dearly loved child. And he went on to say that when we can understand the depth of Christ's love for us, it will not be a chore to approach his throne, that we will want to be in his presence, that we will want to make spending time with Jesus our highest priority. And so he invited the congregation. It was a large, a rather large church of 1500. He said, if you commit to praying for me by name every day, I will do the same for you. And so my husband and I responded to that gracious invitation along with 500 others. Jerry's gonna be 91 years old. <laughs> and if you know Jerry, you know he prayed for each one of us by name for that entire month. And we started experiencing the power from praying that prayer. Um, and all I can say is when I wasn't asking for opportunities to share the grace and love of Jesus with others, when I wasn't intentionally praying that prayer, I didn't have the same opportunities. And so it was in 2013, I was asking the Lord, show me what you want me to teach the upcoming uh, children's choir. My, I had been a Sunday school teacher. My husband and I both led the class for 27 years at that time. And the Lord gave me a vision of a children's prayer card. And I was so excited. I called Jerry and I said, have you thought about putting this very powerful prayer into simple language that would speak to the heart of children? And he said, no, but I want you to assemble a team of educators, work with my team and let's see what God does. And God showed up powerfully. I was then asked, it took about six months for us to come out with this prayer. And then they said, would you um, write a book that would take parents, teachers, pastors through this curriculum for children? And afterward, um, the end of 2014, I was connected to the four to 14 window movement and they are focused on four R's, reaching children with the gospel of Jesus Christ, rescuing them from oppression, rooting them in who they are in Jesus or discipleship, and then releasing them as agents of transformation. And what a joy it was to gather with over a thousand international leaders from all over the world, uh, all focused and with a heart for children. And that's where God launched us into international ministry. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's really interesting that I heard when we had some of our discussions beforehand that you are working with Dick Eastman and mm -hmm. Every Home for Christ. And perhaps you could just share a little bit of some of the different people that God has brought into this orbit. Yes. you know, that you are operating in. It's really very, very exciting. I, I, I know that, you know, here in the Boston area, we, we maybe don't have as much of a broad exposure to what God is doing literally around the world. But, but I know that God has been knitting mm. ministries, leaders, uh, visionary movements, 
uh, things that are to do with with seminaries that are are seeing the importance and and I really do want for you to be able to develop and I know you will mm-hmm. about this this four to fourteen window you know we, yeah. we're we're uh, you know we're aware of the forty what is it the 1040 four, wind, yes. window which is the prayer emphasis that really covers that the area unreached. that is. Yeah, the unreached people groups and has mm-hmm. got so many people, uh, literally the most densely populated portion of earth uh, as far as numbers of people are concerned are in the 1040 window. But but this 4 to 14 window that came about, mm-hmm. can you just share a little bit about that? Yes. Because I know that God will use that to be able to really minister to some of our hearts. And then before we go on too far, and I know you prayed a little bit of the children's prayer, but we're going to be just doing a little round of prayer because oh, we do this a couple sure. of times uh, during our program because it's our prayer meeting and mm. we're just encouraging each of you to pray with us. But just share with us about the 4 to 14 window and how mm. that came into existence. Yes, we'd be happy to. So Dr. Louise Bush is a great missiologist who coined the 10 40 window for the unreached people groups, but also uh, engaged professors at Fuller Theological Seminary to write a 275 page compendium on the value of children, the value God has placed on them throughout history. And it was a stunning paper. And from that was birthed this age demographic window, 4 to 14, because The research shows us that around 80% of decisions made for Christ happen within that window. So the challenge then is, are we as a church, as a global church, a body of believers, really focusing on this demographic? And if not, why? And we need to be. It's, It's a paradigm shift in many ways because it's not just reaching children with the gospel, but it also leads to their release and how God can use them as messengers of his grace, truth, and justice. And you mentioned uh, partnerships. We are all about partnerships. We are hearing more and more about the great collaboration, how God is bringing together the denominations to work together and ministries to work together, large and small. And that unity so honors God and so honors one another. And then we see God blessing and multiplying and advancing the kingdom efforts. So we are so thankful for the partnership with Every Home for Christ who helped us to create a gospel tract called the Lost Sheep. It's a Lost Sheep Engager. If you are a grandparent or a parent and you want a simple, um, engaging way to share the gospel with your children, this is a beautiful pamphlet. If you have children within your church and they are on outreach to share the gospel with other kiddos, this is a great tool. But we also have partnerships with Campus Crusade for Christ, with King's Kids International, with too many to name, All Africa, Baptist Fellowship under Baptist World Alliance, and we just celebrate each one. We are here to serve the church, uh, to grow the kingdom, to advance the kingdom. So what a joy. You know, it's, it's really interesting how God is really bringing this emphasis for the young, Mm. for children, particularly here in our church. I know, you know, as Pastor Sam was being, sharing a little bit with you before, how that we are seeing a real exceptional move of God's spirit happening in the city. It's it's not just in our church. Mm -hmm. It's in the entire city with the evangelical churches coming together and the youth of these churches gathering together. But I, I, I want to just kind of ask you if you wouldn't mind just opening up to us a little bit because statistically mm-hmm. we know that children don't get the kinds of priorities, uh, particularly in as, as we do many things. You know, we emphasize missions, we emphasize our worship ministries, churches in general, always emphasize some kind of, you know, outreach in different levels. But oftentimes, it just slips under the radar. 
And we know there are obviously wonderfully gifted human beings who lay their lives down as Sunday school teachers mm. and, and give themselves for years on end to be able to just care for and love, love children. But you had some statistics, and I don't want to just say it for you because I think there's some things that, that you could point to that would mm. help us mm. to be able to really see even more clearly about some of the things that we need to address as the church of Jesus Christ and about prioritization. And so, and after you share that, I mm -hmm. feel like we're going to just take some time and pray directly into that mm -hmm. because we're going to be asking the Lord mm -hmm. to make these changes and make these differences. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Um, the sad reality is, although that huge number come to Christ, in the 4 to 14 age, only 3% of church budgets are actually spent on children. And why is that? And why are we not including our children as part of leading our prayer meetings or as part of our missional task force? Because when we equip children to pray, when we nurture their relationship with Jesus, when we invite them to use their gifts, there is a special anointing on children, as you can see from the testimonies. And that's just a teeny bit. I get so many hundreds of testimonies from all over the world. And it just demonstrates how heaven does draw near when children pray that Jesus himself is inclining his ears to the prayers of children. And I will encourage you pastors if you train your children to pray and then you invite them to help lead a prayer meeting because they're so relational, you're not just going to have 10 or 12 show up. They're going to bring their moms and dads, their grandparents and their friends. And their prayers may be short, but they're inspired. Jesus is praying their prayers through the children and he is hearing and answering. And the other challenge I always say is, I know the burden of pastors. My dad was a pastor and you have a prayer list a mile long. Take a handful of those prayer requests and give them to the children as a prayer covering. Invite them to pray wow, for you. That's beautiful. You will be so blessed and it will just uh, demonstrate how God is using these little ones. You know, and just so that we can actually do that, and I know that Charlotte is another person who most of our people who are watching this program know that she was in Christian school administration for, for so many years, but, uh, you know, we don't even want to say how long because it, it gives away t far too much information. <laughs> but uh, the last 10 years, she was the principal of the Park Street kids uh, and Park Street School uh, ministry that was part of the uh, the great Parks, Park Street mm -hmm. Church and associated with that for sure. Uh, Charlotte, would you begin our prayer? And, and for those of you that are with us and you're, you're participating, I'm really asking that you don't just listen to us mm -hmm. pray, mm -hmm. but that you actually will respond by praying with us. Charlotte, if you would begin, and then Candy, I'm going to ask you just to pray, and then I'm going to wrap up a little portion of prayer and believing that you are standing with us and praying with us. Lord, I thank you for the tenderness of children's hearts. I thank you for how open-hearted, Lord, they are towards you and how responsive they are to your love, Lord. And Lord, you said that unless we become a little, like a little child, we will not even enter the kingdom of heaven. That's how much, how much emphasis and care and love you placed upon a child. And so, Father, we just pray that we would follow that example, Lord, in our lives, in our churches, Lord, and that, God, we would not assign children to some kind of ministry when they grow up, Lord. They have a ministry now. And as Candy has shared, Lord, they, they love to pray. I have been so blessed by the prayers of children through the years, countless times. And so, Lord, we just pray, God, that we would release 
the, the, the love and the grace that you've already placed in our children, Lord. And they would understand that they are a part of what you're doing here in the earth, Lord. And that it's exciting, Lord. And they would exercise that faith that you have given them, Lord. May we encourage that faith. May we give them opportunities, Lord, to speak forth your word, to pray, Lord, to see the excitements of your answers to their prayer, Lord. We ask in Jesus' name, amen. 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 And Father God, you said, let the children come, for of such is the kingdom of heaven. Please help your church not to hinder the children. Help us not to stand in the way. Father, we see you equipping and unleashing a generation of children to be salt and light within their homes and in their communities. And we say, Father, we want more. We know this is the desire of your heart. We know you are fulfilling your prophecy that you are turning the hearts of the fathers to the children and the children to the fathers. So Lord, make us sensitive to the leading of your spirit. Help us to walk in obedience to your commands. You have given us a mandate to teach our children to pray. Enable us to do so in Jesus' name by the power of your Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And Father, we just thank you that you are at work in this generation. Lord, we ask that the children of this generation, of this season on the earth, Father, we know that there's so many attacks that are coming against them. We know that there are so many undermining forces that are trying to kill, steal, and destroy. And, and, and these are oftentimes people who are, are teachers or people who are overseers or, or administrators. And, and they, are, they are literally trying to funnel confusing understandings into the minds of the little ones. And so, Father, I pray that there will come an embrace of these prayers, an embrace of being able to pray these simple prayer cards that cause young children to be able to have a hope, to believe in you, to be able to ask of you and inquire of you and know that there is a God in heaven who reveals secrets. Father, we're reminded that these Hebrew children, Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they were young teenage boys when they were banished into this land that tried to brainwash them and tried to take away from them their faith in the living God. But they stood, they stood Father, I think even of my own life as a child when I was young and, and I just, I don't know, it was, it was just that my heart engaged with you when I was a child. And Lord, I, I remember, I remember that, that man who was, who was the, the head of the weightlifting area in the, in, in the YMCA in Barrie, Ontario, Canada, and, and I witnessed to him and he came to church and he came and he and, and when I saw him there in church I went over to him as the altar call was given and I, I asked him if he wanted to give his life to the Lord and and here he was 30 years old and 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 here's an 11 year old boy reaching out and 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 saying would you like to give your life to Jesus and he came with me to the altar and he turned his life over to you, Lord. And, and he was able in that moment to be able to enter into a life of ministry. And many years later, he, he came up and he met me and he saw me in a different setting and he was so thankful, Lord. And it was a reuniting when I was now an adult and he was a, a considerably older man. Lord, you use children. You use children. Father, we think even of John, the apostle. He was barely past. He was still a teenage boy. He was probably 15 or 16 years old when he walked with you. He talked with you. He laid his 
head on your breast. And in a most appropriate and healthy sense, you model for him something that spoke into his life. And Father, we just pray for a releasing and a loosing of these young people to enter into the anointing. Father, we pray that you're going to accomplish your purposes in this season and in this time. And Lord, I thank you for Candy. I thank you for bringing her. I thank you for giving us this opportunity to, to, to find a systematic way. Because Lord, we, we love the anointing of the Spirit of God and we resonate with you, Holy Spirit. But Lord, we're grateful that there are tools that can help in practical ways, in ways that people can get handles. And so, Father, we just pray right now that you'll just bless the rest of this time as, as it is unfolded for us as we participate in it and we experience all that you, Lord, really want to accomplish for us. So, Father, we just ask for your blessing just to minister right now to Candy as she takes us into more of the story. Yes. Amen. 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 Powerful. Hallelujah. Thank you. Amen. Um, we see, that's a wonderful story. I love these stories. They're, when I hear of children uh, having such amazing influence yeah. in the lives of others, and, and we see this every day, yes. but we need to see more of it. So, um, and we, we see God moving powerfully in the lives of children all over the world. But at the same time, we are witnessing the tragic challenges and chaos of struggling communities within our own nation. Yes. And as pastors and teachers and parents, we know the value of teaching children to pray. We just have to do it. We have to be intentional of nurturing their relationship with Jesus. I mean, that's what's lacking. When we look at the statistics in the church, Within the U.S., we see upwards of 70% walking away in their teens. And why is that? Well, because they had a head knowledge, but not a heart knowledge. And how can we nurture a child's relationship with Jesus unless we teach them how to pray? And how do we get them excited about their faith if we don't involve them, invite them into the ministry? So what we have seen is God has provided a simple prayer strategy that not only gets them on the prayer journey, but on the prayer care and share journey. Why? Because as they are praying everything God desires for them, as they are praying through the great commandments, love God, love people, and the great commission, use me for your glory, there is a transformation happening within them yes. and impacting yes. the world. The Lord is reaching them through them to touch so many lives for the gospel. And so we want to equip our joy at the prayer covenant is to equip churches with training and resources that will make this painless mm -hmm. as easy as possible and will really help with the burden of reaching those in your community. Because as I say, if we train a child and then if we release them, the joy that comes from serving Jesus captures their heart. They grow more and more in love with Jesus. And the result is sticky faith, a lifetime of serving Jesus, a lifetime of following Jesus. But if we wait, which is the current trends, the, the paradigm shift that is needed in the church is to say, we can invite a child to use their gifts to serve Jesus. If we wait till they're adults, what happens? I mean, if you look at the statistics, right. there's only a, a few percent that are really uh, serving Jesus, that are sharing their faith with boldness. But if a child receives Jesus, he wants to tell everybody. He's relational, he's fearless, and ve what's very important to remember is that there is a special anointing on children. Um, but for us to see that, we need to have open hearts and open minds to release them as partners in ministry, not simply objects of ministry. You know, it's really so important, and it's it's probably the it, it it's probably the crux of what seems to go wrong in so many churches. 
is the tendency of usury, mm. the tendency to see people for their gifts. Mm. We, we all recognize that it, it, it's kind of a double-edged sword because in one sense it's a good thing because people want to be able to have whatever gifting it is that's in them to be released and to be loosed. But the, the place where it really breaks down is that instead of seeing people for who they are and how God's designed them, there is a tendency to see people for how you can utilize them. And it's a utility kind of a thing. So I just know that God is wanting to do something to really change our posture. And part of our changing our posture in what, what you've talked about even here is, is really being able to prioritize children. The reason oftentimes children are left out is because they're not seen as being utilitarianly a good place to invest. It's so wrong. It's so wrong on so many levels. But it's just part of what is at fault, what is wrong with how churches function, but without getting into a place where we're critical. Because I don't want to go there. There's no great benefit in that. We're all human. We all make mistakes. We all have these, these fallibilities in us. But I just know that God is wanting us to be able to, you know, he says it, you know, he loves the least, mm. the least of these. So as much as you have done to the least of these, so have you done it unto me. And it's not like children are lesser or least in, in some categorization sense, but in a very true sense, we want to see the children as being a priority in his eyes. I'm going to ask that we go around to another little round of prayer, and, and I'm going to begin it, and then Candy will go to you and then Charlotte. Father, we just thank you that even as you loved the children of the earth, and, and we, we are aware of this little song that we sang when we were children, Jesus loves the little children, all the children of the world, red and yellow, black and white, they're precious in his sight. Jesus loves the little children of the world. And Lord, how that made us feel included. It gave us a sense of belonging because we could find ourselves in those phrases. And Father, I pray right now that we will have your heart because we have all, every human being, we have all come from this seed in our mother's womb to be born and be children grow up through this process. Lord, we don't look at children as though they have to be together or they have to have accomplishments or, or they have to have wisdom and knowledge. Lord, we know that life brings that if we pay attention. But Lord, we do pray that you will bless the children of this earth. Prepare us, Lord. Prepare us to be ready to sit back as the children move forward. Give us, God, hearts that can be resonant with your heart that is that way. Because, Lord, even as you've been making so real to me about how you move through the generations and across the generations, Lord, that's the connecting point that we have. Lord, we just pray that this next generation will come into your embrace and into your fullness. Go ahead, Candy. Would you just lead us? Yes, and thank you, Father, that in Matthew 18, Jesus said, I am not willing that a single little one should perish. So I pray that you will burden our hearts to reach every child with the grace and love of Jesus, with the hope of the gospel, that they will see themselves 
clothed in righteousness, dressed in your armor, ready for battle. Lord Jesus, we know your hand is upon this generation. We know that you are breathing down upon them. We know that you want to bless them. And we thank you and praise you. We continue to ask for your heart for these little ones to accomplish your eternal purposes for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. And Lord, I pray that we would really take to heart the biblical precedences that are so numerous in the Word. We think, Lord, of Samuel, a, a little boy, being, leaving, having left his mother who, who gave him willingly to your work. And you spoke to him in the night. And you showed him things. You came to him as a child. And Lord, there are many children that you are coming to and you're speaking to them, Lord. And make us attuned to them, Lord, because you often speak through children. Your word also declares that from the mouths of babes you speak. Father, we think of David, the young shepherd boy out tending the sheep, and the heart of worship that he cultivated towards you and he knew that he was loved by you. These themes of love and grace that Candy has mentioned, that these prayer cards teach these children about you are incredible. Because when we know that we are loved by you, we want to become to you. You draw us like a magnet and children are just drawn and responsive to those who truly love them. And Lord, you love them the most. And we think of King Josiah, I was just reading about him this week, who was seven years old, had been miraculously spared when his life was, was threatened. And his nurse, what she must have poured into him, because by seven years old, he became a godly king. So we just, Lord, we just pray that we would see, we would see children through your eyes, Lord. We would hear them through your ears, Lord, and you would speak through them, Lord, and we would hear your voice in the voices of our children. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen and amen. You know, we're just going to take a little bit of time here and really begin to understand how to access, how you can access some of these tools, some of these books. Um, Candy, would you just share a little bit about the the the, the book that you've yes. written here on this, uh, you know, this this amazing thing about the, you know, the covenant, the prayer covenant for children. Mm -hmm. And uh, I I I'm gonna I'll slip over to your shot, and so you can just take a yeah, a little bit of time to explain about some of these things. Great, and then I would love to give an example of how this really works with Last Corps Evangelism in Africa, if we have mm -hmm. the time. Yes. Um, yeah. But yes, we have made this very fun and engaging and beautiful illustrations. Children love it. It's fun-filled activities, 10 scripture-based activities for each of the 10 lessons. And there are coloring pages. There's something called popcorn prayer, which invite children to pray corporately and become comfortable. And that ends up being their favorite thing to do. And then you just witness the Holy Spirit praying his prayers through these little ones. But I want to give you a wonderful example of the power of equipping children to pray. And that that's something called last quarter evangelism. And in partnership with, La with All Africa Baptist Youth Fellowship and the Prayer Covenant, and this is a, you know, a body of 50,000 churches in 38 wow. nations in Africa. Wow. Imagine that. Um, we have come together to work on this outreach initiative every year. But how it began was our prayer covenant leader for Go Day, which is the, the month of May, um, part of the Go movement, that's another partner, was they were you'll, you'll have yeah, to explain we'll a little explain, bit of this yeah it's good um, i mean you need to hear this because yeah, this these is, these partnerships are just dynamic yeah. how god is 
fit and put some of so these things we love, together. So we love partnerships. And um, for Go Movement in May of 2020, the Prayer Covenant children in Africa were going to pray and share their faith with one person every day during school. But COVID shut those plans down and I got a call that said, oh no, what do we do? And I said, any chance you can mobilize prayer through radio, through churches and have the children pray into this Go Day or Go Movement 2020? And he said, yes, we can do that. And through the, the network of AAB, YF churches and Prayer Covenant, almost 240,000 predominantly children and youth wow. began to pray. <laughs> and God, as he always does, he drew near and he answered their prayer. And it was a few months later where they called me and said, we have an idea. Do you, would you approve of this? And it's called Last Quarter Evangelism. We want to have an evangelistic outreach among churches between October 1 and December 31. And uh, I said, the only stipulation I have is that you invite the children in to help plan those outreaches, one, mm -hmm. and two, help them, invite them to help design the gospel resources used. Okay, no problem. They had a competition with the Baptist churches. They said, if you are going to sit down and share the gospel with someone, what would you want on that paper? And many took Old Testament stories, but it was brilliantly done. They got like 150 plus submissions. We had to close it off in five days. We picked the top 10 or 20. We did um, digital tracks as well as printed them. Well, the kids were so excited to share that they didn't want the outreach to end. They, they didn't want to go home. The, the, the testimonies were overwhelming and powerful. Isn't that exciting? Now, let me tell you what happened in year one, LQE 2020. Over 14,000 churches participated. Over um, 14,000 churches unleashed 240,000 children. They shared the gospel through various outreaches with five, over 5 million and 300,000 plus made decisions to follow Jesus. But see, that was only the beginning. God had bigger plans. And in 2021, we saw that almost quadruple. Now, what happened? Well, instead of 240,000 predominantly children and youth evangelists, there were over 900,000. But a big percentage, or less than half, but a good deal, were parents were adults. The kids got the adults and excited. <laughs> so we saw this healthy intergenerational uh, partnership. And then between handing out the uh, tracks and online evangelism, which praise God for social media, there were over 32 million touched by the gospel almost 700,000 decisions to follow Jesus Christ. Over 36,000 pastors, leaders, parents, volunteers, coordinators Amazing. helped with this initiative. And this is the second for a 10 year uh, project. So what can happen if we start seeing that happen in other nations around the world, including right here at home? So if you come to www.theprayercovenant.org mm -hmm. um, and click on resources and languages, you're going to see this resource downloadable for free um, in, in over 25 languages. At the same time, if you are based in the US, you just have to write me, candy, at theprayercovenant.org. You request what you are looking for, whether it's a teacher's manual or prayer cards, and we will send those to you free of charge because we want to see children on mission and we want to see them impacting the kingdom. So I, we are here to serve in oh, any way goodness. we can. Well, this is incredible. I mean, just even the resources to be able to do this, to be able to create these materials, to have this kind of massive coverage on websites, and mm -hmm. and and that is, is it it it's God. It's I mean, what exactly. what can you say? It's a what, what else of God. can you say? It's yes. it's God. And and I know, Candy, there there's there's a lot of things that you can't say mm. here mm. at this encounter because. It's, it's touching on nations. 
that literally it would be against their against their the values mm. against their uh, their mm-hmm. you know in some of these is in some of these far reaching nations mm. that are are opposed to the claims of the kingdom of god uh, and you know, I do want to pray for them in a, in in a few minutes as we kind of uh, mm-hmm. uh, come to a close in our prayer gathering and our prayer time. But I I know this that God is designing the usefulness of children to evangelize. I know you brought a little emphasis on that, but can you share with us just a couple of the stories of how these children? have been used in some of these nations that don't even know the principles mm. of the kingdom of God to be able to bring uh, Christ into these areas, into these regions. Just share Oh, with absolutely. Um, I was at a finishing the task meeting recently and I shared that if we do not include the children and youth, the task will not get finished. Mm-hmm. Because when you think about these restricted nations, and when you think about nations like Pakistan and India, mm-hmm. and you say, who is going to be most effective in sharing the gospel message? Is it going to be you and I? Is it going to be a foreign missionary? Or is it going to be their child? And God is using these children, just like you saw in that video, who experience the grace and love of Jesus to bring that message to their aunts, their uncles, their moms and dads, their grandparents, and their friends. We had stories, I've seen testimonies where children will say, I want in these countries all my friends to know Jesus. I carry these prayer cards and I give these out. So I think that um, there is an untapped harvest force when we release children. I want to share this with you. This is, this is Urdu. We just finished updating the third edition in Urdu. Over 100,000 children in Pakistan are going to go through this cur- curriculum, are going to be touched uh, with the gospel message, with the power of prayer in a nation, Pakistan. And I will share one more thing quickly, and that's the nation of India where we see amazing outreach of children, where just at Christmas, 20,000 children were mobilized to share their faith with five people in the month of December and how God used that and blessed that initiative. So we need to just keep going and, and, and start right here at home. Well, it's really a, a very, very important thing. And I, I, was, I was sharing with you and Charlotte just a little bit earlier here in the, in, when we were gathering before to have a little bite to eat, how it was brought to my attention that here in this Boston area, and I'm not going to name the people or the particulars of this, but there is a family in our church who has a child that's in in uh, the pre-K program and she was praying over her lunch in this pre-K school system and she was told by her teachers you can't do that mm-hmm. no you can't pray and we know this is this is not right it's not legally right. correct even correct. Uh, right. in our nation. But there are other nations that, that is like that. And this, and this teacher said to the child, if you don't stop this praying, we're going to tell your parents that, the, that you must stop praying. And went to the parents and told the parents mm-hmm. about, about it. And they thankfully said, no, we pray over our food. We pray over our meals. And so this little child stood up in pre-K and gave testimony by Praise praying God. over her food. Yeah. You know, it gets Courage. just as basic as that. It gets as simple as that. God uses the small things of this world yes. to bring down the things that we consider mighty, the strongholds, mm. the, these, these forces that seem overwhelming. You, you look at the story of David is the classic mm. story of a boy who literally would not stop by 
seeing this quote unquote person who was so powerful prancing around and, and making his boasts and Goliath was there and, and it was a boy. The, the, the soldiers who were knowledgeable of the size and the magnitude of this individual were threatened by, by that, but the child David, and he yes. wasn't more than a boy because yes. they were mocking him because he was a boy. And, and, you know, what are you doing here? You're just in the way and, and coming here just to gawk around and to look around. No, he, he had that, that anointing and ferocity because he was a child. And that, that, that child dynamic, that can set a nation free. Amen. And it can set Amen. nations free. And we are going to pray one more round of prayer and ask you to pray with us. And mm -hmm. something that I've been doing, and I would encourage you to do it because we're doing this with online types of things, we invite you even just to press pause as we pray so you can pray mm -hmm. along with us and pray through. We don't want you to just be sort of statically watching. We're so, we're so tuned, aren't we, to be observers. We're so tuned to be spectators. But this is not what this is about. It's about participating with God, the God of the universe. So Charlotte, if you would just begin this last little round of prayer and then Candy wrap it up and then I'll kind of tie a bow on it and then we'll be done. But we know that God, is working. Amen. He is going to loose this bonding between young and old. He is, Hallelujah. he is doing it. Charlotte, you just begin, dear. Lord, we thank you that you are touching children throughout the world, Lord. This is just so incredibly beautiful and precious, God, for us to hear from Candy today, Lord that millions of children are praying earnestly, Lord. And Lord, we just thank you for that. And we know, God, that your spirit is being unleashed in the world through children. And we thank you for their faith, Lord. We thank you for their trust in you, Lord. We thank you, God, that you do love them, Lord, even in the hard places, Lord, the places where there is war going on, like Ukraine right now, and we have so many questions, Lord, but we know, God, that you are there caring, caring in ways that children can receive, God, and we just want to thank you for it. We hear stories, and we will hear many more, God, of your care for children and for their um, bravery, Lord, and just moving out in you, Lord, and being used by you, Lord, in just simplicity and humility. In Jesus' name, we thank you. Amen. 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 And thank you, Father, for the example of David. Thank you that he could have retreated, but he didn't. He ran towards the enemy. In your power, in your strength, and he saw your goodness and he witnessed your faithfulness. And we want all children to witness your goodness in the land of the living. We want you to breathe upon them. We want you to anoint them and release them. And we don't want to stand in the way. So Lord Jesus, have your way among us. Have your way among the children. Be honored, be glorified, be exalted. Thank you for this precious time together. In Jesus' name, amen. And Father, we're just thanking you for your steadfastness through the generations. Yes. Father, you have worked in mankind through these years to be able to accomplish your purposes. And Father, we're thanking you for it. Lord, the, the joy of being a little older is to be able to look back and see the faithfulness of you, Lord. You have been faithful to all generations and you are faithful to this generation. Father, I just, I come against the temptation in the hearts of we who are a little older 
and, and of, of a generation even under us that, that might be saying, well, we, we don't even want to bring children into this world. You know, it looks so black, it looks so dark. But you love life. Yes. You love life. You author life. You bring about life. And Father, we praise you that there is a new generation that is coming, that is in the womb of some right now, that is yet to be born, that is going to be embracing these calls to be able to be loosed in the earth as flames of fire. Father, I pray that the prophetic unction that is been on children, even as exampled there by Samuel of old, how that he carried that, that anointing. He didn't know, he didn't recognize that it was you, Lord, that was speaking to him, but it was you, Lord. And Father, there are children right now who are recognizing your voice and they're hearing your call. And Lord, you're putting into them your power to accomplish your purposes in the earth. And Father, we pray for a releasing and a loosing of every child, every household, every family unit to be able to fulfill your purposes. In Jesus' name, amen. And Charlotte, I'm just going to ask you, dear, if you would just respond one more time and just thank Candy for being here with us. Thank you, dear. Candy, we're so thankful to have you here today. And what an inspiration you are and just obeying God like you've done in such a just a genuine way and how he's multiplied. It reminds me of the story of the little boy with the fishes who gave what he had to Jesus and then Jesus took and multiplied it and fed multitudes and this is what your ministry is doing, the prayer covenant throughout the earth. So we just pray a continued blessing upon you. I'd just like to encourage you, you will put up the, um, the contact information for Candy and where you can reach her and get these materials for your own children and for children that you are ministering to in, in churches or in other avenues just feel free to contact her and we want to see this grow here in America too and just see God using our children mightily. Amen. Thank you. It's been an honor and a privilege to be with you both yeah. and your heart for prayer, your love for the children, your love for God's people is truly inspiring and it's been a great blessing to me personally so thank you both very much. And Candy. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for sharing with us. Thank you for making this a delightful time. Mm -hmm. And we will follow with great interest as God continues to bless you, so much. you as well. And we want to thank you right now for being with us here. And we want to loose you to be able to go into the earth and to be able to carry the message of Christ and the blessing of the Lord. God bless you.